Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Xu Qinghui. I come from Zhanghua Christian Hospital, Taiwan. Today, I will present the common symptoms of the thyroid cancer and the fire management. Okay, uh, when we talk about the thyroid gland, first we will talk the anatomy. The thyroid gland is the important endocrine gland located at the base of the throat. It composes two wing-shaped lobes and the isthmus that connect them. The thyroid gland uses the iodine to secrete hormones that control the heart rate, BP, and body temperature. Another one is the parathyroid gland. When we talk about the parathyroid gland, it generally four in number and is situated behind the lateral lobe of the thyroid gland. The parathyroid hormone in response to the low blood calcium, so it plays a key role in regulating the amount of the calcium in the blood and also within the bones. When we talk about the thyroid nodule, they are very common, benign, and usually not malignancy. And when we talk about the thyroid cancer, it means the cancer cell comes from the thyroid gland. Pertinent risk factor with the thyroid cancer, maybe the three of them. First is the family history, uh, the family history of the thyroid cancer and the thyroid goit history. Second one is the radiation exposure. If you have some disease and treat as the radiation therapy in the childhood, and when you grow up, there's more increasing possibility to get the thyroid cancer. And the third one is the heritage genetic syndromes, like the MEN2. We call it a multiple endocrine neoplasm disease. The second one we call about the incidence. Thyroid cancer is occurs more frequently in women than men, and approximately 3.1. And usually it occurred in the white and the Asian people. And then this slide, we will see the most common cancer type is the papillary carcinoma. And the second one is the follicular carcinoma. And the third one is the medullary carcinoma. The lifetime risk factor for the thyroid cancer is approximately 1.1 percentage. And the five year survival rate is higher as the 90 percentage. Almost uh, new cases are diagnosed in the early stage because the increasing of the image studies like ultrasounds, like CT, like MRI and PET scans. So more and more thyroid cancer was found at the early stage. The common symptoms of the thyroid cancer is just like the thyroid nodule. Some people have the painless swelling, and some people have the changing in voice, maybe increasing hoarseness, and some people will have the difficult swallowing and difficult breathing. And another one, maybe some people have the pain of your neck of your throat, and some will find the swollen lymph node in your neck. The last two is indicate maybe the last stage of the thyroid cancer. And then when we see the thyroid tumor or we call the thyroid nodule, we have to do something to survey the lesion is benign or malignancy. So first one, I suggest you to do the blood test because you have to measuring a TSH level allow us to differentiate between the functional and the non-functional nodules. This is an important characteristic because the hyperfunctioning nodules are usually benign lesion. And second one, when the nodule is found, the ultrasound of the thyroid, maybe with the fine needle aspiration cytology, will help us to check if the lesion is benign or malignancy. And the third one, we have to see the vocal bone movement before and after the treatment. 
When we use the fine needle aspiration cytology, we will use the ultrasound assistance and use the needle to take some tissue from the nodules. And why we use the fine needle aspiration? Because it remains the most accurate, high cost effect, and the best diagnosis method for evaluating nodules. This is uh, some feature of the thyroid echo finding have to check about the margin, shape, and the echogenicity, and the vascular pattern, or to check if the atrial thyroid tension is exit. And uh, the upper picture will see the thyroid tissue. It has the heterogeneous region and with some cystic region and some solid part. And, uh, Below picture, we will see the irregular margin, and that one we will see maybe is higher possibility of the cancer. And this picture, we will see the taller than white picture, because thyroid gland is just in front of our trachea. So usually, when we see the thyroid nodule, it will lie down, and when we see the Taller than white picture, it may be it means may have possibility of the thyroid cancer. And another one is the ultrasonoid extension. It also means the possibility of cancer. Above fighting, we will call up a sister systems and the recommendation. When we do the fine needle aspiration and the ultrasound, if the fine needle aspiration is non-diagnostic. Maybe we can repeat the fine needle aspiration again. If we found the benign lesion by fine needle aspiration, maybe follow up is the important things and the only you have to do. And if you find the aspiration, the result is a TPR sale. It has the maybe 15 percentage of the malignancy. I search you maybe to repeat. Do repeat the fine needle aspiration to check again. If the follicular neoplasm was suspicious and uh, it was higher as the 13 percentage of the cancer exit, so uh, unilateral lobectomy is suggested to achieve the treatment. If uh, suspicious of a malignancy is also higher as the 75 percentage of the malignancy. So total or radical thyroidectomy is usually a good choice for the patient. Another one, we should do the laryngoscope, also the stroboscope to see the vocal form movement. This pictures we can see the left vocal paresis. Okay, the right one is good, but the left one is not doing down well. So unilateral the vocal fold paralysis may indicate the local invasive thyroid cancer. So we should do the laryngoscope before the treatment to make the stage and also to understanding what will happen after the surgery. CT imagery is a useful tool because these procedures help to check neck nodal metastasis and atrial gland extension. Sometimes when a thyroid gland or thyroid cancer has the local advance with the tracheal invasion or carotid uh, encasement, CT image will help us to make the pre-surgery planning. Later we talk about the cancer type. Thyroid cancer can be usually uh, described as three types. The first one is the well differentiated tumors. Uh, it has the papillary thyroid cancer and the follicular thyroid cancer. And another one is the poorly differentiated tumors or undifferentiated tumors. When we talk about uh, poorly differentiated tumors, also the anaplastic tumors, it's a very advanced disease. And the third one is the medullary thyroid cancer. It's the thyroid cancer, but it comes from the C cell of the thyroid. So it comes from the neural 
endocrine tumor is not the thyroid cell tumor. And the, the American Joint Committee on the Cancer, we call it the AJCC. AJCC has designed the thyroid cancer stage by the tumor node metastasis system. And we can see the stage 1 to stage 4. And also, you can check the TNA classification system online. When patient it gets a thyroid cancer and the age below 55 years old, they only have the stage 1 and the stage 2. Stage 1 means the no metastasis, and stage 2 means the distant metastasis is occurred. And when patient get a thyroid cancer and he is older than 55 years, we can make some stage. The stage 1 means the thyroid cancer is smaller than 4 cm and it is only located in the thyroid gland. And stage 2 means the tumor has spread to the nearby lymph nodes. And when we talk about the stage 3, stage 3 means the tumor it has some lymph node metastasis also, uh, thyroid cancer, it has spread locally to the esophagus or to the tracheal structures. It means the stage 3. And uh, if the thyroid cancer is more advanced and uh, severe at the invasion to the preventable space or carotid encasement or to the vital organ of the major vessel, it means the stage 4. PET CT is the useful tool. Uh, it helps to detect the all regions over the body in a well differentiated thyroid cancer. In our day, we always use the PET CT to check if the distal meta exists. And this is about the cancer staging. When people older than 55, and uh, we will see the TNM stage, and for the differentiated tumors, when the lymph node exists, it's only the stage 2, but the oracle advanced maybe 4A or 4B, they will increase stage to stage 3 or to 4A. But when we talk about the anaplastic thyroid cancer, due to its very severe invasive disease, so they are all stage 4. And another one we talk about the medullary thyroid cancer. Medullary thyroid cancer, when the lymph node is occurred, it jumps to the stage 3. And when the distal meta exit, it jumps to the stage 4C. Later, we will talk about the treatment. Surgery is usually the first choice to do with the thyroid cancer. And uh, the following, there are some adjuvant therapy for the residual or for the unoperatable thyroid cancer. They are radiotherapy, chemotherapy, target therapy, and then the last one, the immunotherapy. Thyroidectomy is usually recommended and uh, we have to resect all the tumors completely. If the tumor is only located in the one side and another one is very clean, no nodules or no lymph node involvement, you can do only the unilateral thyroidectomy for the thyroid cancer. But when we talk about the local recurrence of the metastasis, it has the maybe higher to 10 percentage of the thyroid cancer as found in the recurrence of the contralateral side. So maybe in some expert experience, when you found the thyroid cancer, you can always do the radical thyroidectomy as the first choice for the patients. When we do the thyroidectomy, you will do the radical thyroidectomy and also maybe sometimes the level 6 or level 7 neck dissection. 
However, level 6, level 7 neck dissection is not routine recommended because maybe you will make more severe complication and there's no apparent uh, overall survival rate increasing and when the thyroid cancer is spread to the lateral neck we should do the lateral neck dissection of the level 2 to level 4 and when we do the radical thyroidectomy everyone should be aware of the parathyroid gland it located behind the thyroid gland but it is the important organ for the calcium regulation if you can do it you should find the parathyroid gland first and then to make the re reservation to decrease the possibility of the hypocalcemia to make people uncomfortable and another one is the nerve monitor system we call it the intraoperation nerve monitor system because the recurrent angio nerve is very important for the vocal form motion and the recurrent angio nerve is the branch from the vagus nerve it will control the motion of the intrinsic laryngeal muscle and also the sensation below the larynx so in operation we will use the nerve monitor system to monitor the motion of the vocal fold when the signal decrease uh, whenever you tration or whenever you will cauterization to touch the gland you should protect the nerves and use some steroid after the operation to decrease the palsy of the recurrent laryngeal nerve and about the post-operation care the first one we should monitor the airway and the proper wound care if the vocal palsy is checked during the surgery or there's no signal of the intraoperation the nerve monitoring you should be aware of the vocal palsy so when the patient back to the world you should check the ray or use the fiber to see the vocal motion and the diet education to avoid choking event and another one you, we should monitor the drainage volume if the volume is decreasing slowly okay and the judge is not massive bleeding okay the patient is fine but if the drainage volume is increasing or when the color is changed to pink or changed to the some fruit like the fat or some the, the colors leak you should open the wound again or back to the OR to check the bleeding tendency again and the third one we should monitor the calcium level and the proper supplement when we do the lateral neck dissection sometimes we will make some injury to the thoracic duct so when the chylus leak occurred uh, we will do the non-lipid diet and the proper compression to the wound to decrease the discharge of the chyles. Usually, maybe the first day or the second day, the chyles leak will higher as maybe 300 to 500 meals a day. And with the proper compression and diet control, it will decrease quickly, maybe three or to five days it was spontaneous recovered and after the total thyroidectomy we should also use the cyrosine and the calcine supply because we use the cyrosine supply to decrease the discharge of the TSH and later we can reduce the possibility of the thyroid gland recurrence and the further better treatment and another one is the calcium supplement because uh, when we do the thyroidectomy sometimes we also resect some or major of the parathyroid gland it will result in the hypocalcemia so use the calcium supplement and we can reduce the numbers of the, the limb and uh, make the better recovery of the patient Another one is the radiation therapy, and we call it the radioactive iodine therapy. 
uh, when we talk about the thyroidectomy, it's the first best choice for the thyroid cancer. But for the unresettable, unresettable disease or the residual disease, we will use the radioactive iodine therapy for some residual problem. Usually, the radioactive iodine is the orophone drug. The patient will need admission and isolation for two or three days. And uh, after the patient take pills, and uh, three days, we will check uh, radiation again. If the radiation is below the 30 MCI, and uh, we will let the patient discharge. And after the seven or to ten days, the patient will receive the whole body scan again to detect the residual lesion to see if the radioactive iodine is work. Radiotherapy sometimes is applied to the local advanced disease, maybe about the carotid in case or maybe about the vital organ involvement. Is unreceptible and uh, uh, no response to the radioactive iodine. And we may arrange the radiotherapy for the salvage treatment. And about the chemotherapy, chemotherapy is used some drug to make uh, the circulation to treat the disease during the whole body. But when we talk about the thyroid cancer, there are not, not so many drugs we can use. Dr. Rubicin was the first and the only FDA-approved chemotherapy for the advanced thyroid cancer. And in the nowadays, we can also use the cisplatin or some other things for the second choice for the thyroid cancer. So when we talk about the thyroid cancer, about the adjuvant or therapeutic treatment, we can use the Dr. Rubicin as the weekly or tri-weekly regimen to treat the post-OP thyroid cancer. Sometimes we will use the cisplatin or tasotia weekly to treat the distant meta or residual cancer cell. In addition to the chemotherapy, nowadays the FDA in 2011 had proved the Vendatinib as the tyrosine kinase inhibitor. It works blocking the action of a blood protein that signal cancer cell to multiply. Target therapy may be the another choice for the dysphemata or other residual thyroid cancer disease. And uh, when we talk about the medullary thyroid cancer, because Medullary thyroid cancer is not really thyroid cell origin cancer. So medullary thyroid cancer is no response to the radioactive iodine. So when the patient has advanced medullary thyroid cancer, maybe radical thyroidectomy or target therapy will be another good choice. And this is the our guideline of about the adjuvant therapy as the thyroid kinase therapy or chemotherapy, and another one is the immunotherapy. We call it PEMPRO. PEMPRO is um, not so common in treat thyroid cancer. It's only used in uh, anaplastic thyroid cancer or very advanced thyroid cancer disease, and when uh, other treatment is failure and we can only see the clinical trial or use the immunotherapy as the final weapon to treat patient with advanced thyroid cancer. You can find some other information about the drug information on the internet. And we we'll talk about the immunotherapy because distribution and frequency for the mutation of different thyroid cancer. When the study is more, and the more immunotherapy target will be found, but which one is the best choice? It usually needs some time to examine and a small study to check which target or which drug is best one for the 
untreatable thyroid cancer. Okay, when we talk about the take home message, after all the introduction and the explanation of the thyroid cancer, the incidence of the thyroid cancer is common and uh, is a common endocrine system malignancy. And most of the thyroid cancer, the malignancy is usually the papillary thyroid cancer. And uh, usually it was diagnosed at the early stage. So the five year survival rate was higher to 97.8%. Treatment will, after the complete survey of the thyroid cancer with the stage and the planning, surgery usually is the first line treatment for the differentiated tumors, and a radical incision was suggested. And for advanced metastatic thyroid cancer or for the no response uh, medullary or other anaplastic thyroid cancer. Target therapy or immunotherapy will be another choice for the better or prone prognosis-free survival medicine. Oh, this is my reference. Thank you.